I'd like you to take the word of God, please, and turn with me to the Old Testament book of Jonah. And we're going to the first chapter, the very last verse in the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 and verse 17. All through the Bible, we are to see the Lord because it is God's revelation of himself to us. So to follow some narrative like the story of Jonah and just see what happens to Jonah, what Jonah does, what Jonah preaches, where Jonah goes, is really to miss the point. The Lord wants us to see him working through these things. The same thing applies in each of our lives, your life, my life. We think we live days and weeks and months and years. We have events, we know people. We have things happen to us. We're involved in things that happen to other people. And we recount those days and weeks and months and events and happenings. If that's all we see, we've missed, we've missed it. We've missed it. Because God is with us. He is the omnipotent one. He is the all-powerful, almighty God. He is the omniscient one. He knows all things. He is the omnipresent one. He is everywhere present. And so he is at work in us. From the time I asked God to forgive my sin and by faith trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior as a 14-year-old to surrender my life to the Lord when I was 17. But from that time when I came to know Christ as my personal Savior, I've never been alone, no matter where I've been, I've never been alone from that moment to this moment. God is with me. He lives in me. When he came to live in me, he came to never leave me or forsake me. He is always present with me. And so I am to recognize God in my life and to see God in the events and things that connect with my life. That gives us an idea of what we're looking for when we look in this 17th verse of the book of Jonah Chapter 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. If you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, I want you to mark so you might remember this expression. The Lord had prepared a great fish. And I want you to give special attention to the word prepared. Prepared. Now you remember the story. God called a man by the name of Jonah to go to a place called Nineveh, the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. He was to go to Nineveh and preach God's word to those people in that great city of Nineveh. By the way, that happens to be a city at this very moment that we're trying to free from ISIS, that ancient city. Pretty amazing, isn't it? But God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go. He did not want to go. And before we condemn Jonah, we need to think about all the things God leads us to do that we don't want to do. So instead of going to Nineveh, he went to a place called Joppa on the seacoast and found a ship that was going to a place called Tarsus. As far as we know, that was the most distant place he could possibly run to. And he boarded the boat, paid the fare, and before long, went down beneath and found a place to rest, to escape everyone and everything but God. A storm came up on the sea. Not just an ordinary storm, but something that God caused. It was something like these, never, these sailors had never seen before. And they were frightened. And they were men who naturally wouldn't be frightened. They were seasoned sailors and they had no reason to fear the sea. That was their life and livelihood. But they became terribly afraid. And so they wondered why this had happened because this was unlike any other storm they'd ever experienced and they started looking for Jonah, found him fast asleep down below 
and started asking him questions, all kinds of questions. He told him who he was and where he was from, to what people he belonged to, something about what he was supposed to be doing. And then he said, I believe in the God who made the world, who created the earth and the sea. That would have stuck with him. You see, when Jonah said, I know the God who created the sea. They became aware that the issue was Jonah. Jonah admitted that the issue was him. He said, if you throw me overboard, the sea will be calm. And when we come to that closing part of the first chapter, and Jonah willingly commits himself to die, to save the life of these sailors, that's a pretty noble thing, a, a mighty noble thing. So after they tried to row and save themselves and saw they couldn't, the sailors took hold of Jonah and threw him into the sea. They cast Jonah, the Bible says, they cast him into the sea. Now, I want all of you to go with me just for a moment. In your mind, let's stand together just for a moment. Well, I, I want you to stand and look, please. All of you stand up, if you don't mind, please. Stand and look. Because we're standing to our feet on our tiptoes and I want us to look over the side of that boat. Look over the side of that boat into the dark Mediterranean Sea. We see a terrible storm and all of a sudden, Jonah is thrown into the sea. And he goes beneath the waves and we see him no more. And suddenly, the storm stops. Did you see that? Now, what we don't see immediately is what God tells us happened. I want you to be seated. Because we last looked at Jonah going overboard, breaking the water, and being buried in the sea. And then miraculously, just as Jonah predicted, the storm ceases and the sea is now calm. But what we don't see is what we read here in the 17th verse. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. My wife asked me, do you think they saw the fish swallow Jonah? I don't think so. Maybe they did, but I don't think so. But even if they had seen the fish swallow Jonah, they would have all said, well, there goes Jonah. That's the end of him. Gone. And the point I want to make to you and emphasize every way I possibly can is that God was working on the other end of that experience. God had prepared the fish. The word prepared means to appoint or to tell. So God told a great fish, the Bible says, where to go, what to do, when to do it, the exact place to be and to be ready because something he had never eaten before was coming overboard. God had prepared, the Bible says, a great fish. Now here we are in life looking at the unknown, peering into the deep, thinking what's going to happen What's going to become of me or my loved ones or whomever? And we need to know if God is with us. God had prepared a great fish. God prepared a great fish. What does that mean? It means if you're worrying about it, when you grow up, will you know who you're to marry? God has already prepared that person for you. 
It means if you're a Christian and you're trying to prepare for a job and studying, it means God has already prepared that job for you. It means if you're expecting a baby and you wonder how in the world you're going to raise that child, if you're a child of God, God's already prepared a way for you to follow and he'll be with you when you need him and need his advice and need his counsel. God had prepared what Jonah needed. Now, if you doubt, if you doubt what happened here, and you're trying to imagine how could it happen, you're not doubting the fish and Jonah. You're doubting the God who made the fish and made Jonah. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Sometimes I, I read these accounts of people trying to prove this really could have happened. I read two or three of them this past week preparing for this. Actual historical records of men being swallowed by whales and one found alive and resuscitated and went back to whaling. And I think if I had to do that, to find a newspaper article somewhere or an historical account to figure out that this really could have happened, then I'm not trusting God because this is God's word. God said it happened. And we need a faith that believes what God says is true. God said it happened. And it happened just that way. This is a book of miracles. This Bible is a book of miracles, but this book of Jonah is a book of miracles. It was a miracle that the storm came up because it was like no ordinary storm, like no other ordinary storm. It, it's a miracle that the storm ceased when Jonah hit the water. Uh, it's a miracle that Jonah lived in that fish for three days and nights. It's a miracle that Jonah was vomited up, the Bible says, on dry ground exactly where God told him to go in the first place. He could never have caught another boat. He missed that boat deliberately. He didn't go to that harbor. He didn't head in that direction. And there are many times in life we don't head in God's direction and God intends for us to get somewhere. And we may go through many storms till we finally wind up where we should have been in the first place. It was a miracle that God saved the people of Nineveh when Jonah preached. It was a miracle that God worked in Jonah's life in what we call the gourd Look at it, please. In the fourth chapter, the Bible says in verse 6, and the Lord God prepared, chapter 4, verse 6, a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. The same word prepared, the same word translated prepared. Many words are translated prepared in our English Bible, but this is the very same word. God appointed or God told a gourd to appear in a certain place. Notice it was a miracle not only to prepare the gourd. In verse 7, the Bible says, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd that it withered. God prepared a worm. Can you imagine God Almighty, the creator of God, giving attention to a worm and the right kind of worm that would destroy a gourd in a day? But it was. <laughs> Read verse 8 of chapter 4. And it came to pass when the sun did rise, arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said it is better for me to die than to live. Now if you say, well I have a hard time with that fish story. I don't, but you say you do. Well, think of this. <coughs> God says he did the same thing for the gourd that he did with the fish. God said he did the same thing with the worm he did with the fish. God said he did the same thing with the wind that he did with the fish. 
You ever stop and think the things of the things that you may not call the big things, the great things, but every little detail of your life with all the twists and turns, how you and I could be a thousand miles from where we are at this moment, but God has worked in our lives and guided us and helped us so that we are where we are, so he can speak to us as he desires to speak to us and use us for his glory. The God we know and serve that we trusted for our salvation if we're believers is the same God who rules and reigns and has the reins of this universe in his hands. He's the God of heaven and earth, the almighty God, and he wants you to know him and he wants to live in you and guide your life. And he wants you to know you can trust him. I want you to write this expression down, would you please? Years ago, a man came through here by the name of Sells. Dr. Sells, we called him. Frank Sells. And one of his favorite expressions was, God is always previous. I heard that one day when he was teaching. He'd sit and rub his old bald head and say things. He was sitting at the desk and rubbing his old bald head. And he said, God is always previous. And I thought, well, okay. I wrote it down. He repeated himself. He wasn't afraid to repeat himself. Every Bible teacher and pastor and parent who's a Christian should not be afraid to repeat things. It doesn't need to be repeated like this. I told you, you dummy. No, it doesn't need to be repeated like that. It does need to be repeated while someone's made a terrible mistake and say, I told you that would happen. No, no, no. It does need to be repeated like that. But lessons worth learning are worth being reinforced, being reinforced again and again and again. And he said, God's always previous. And in his own time, he elaborated on it. He said, before God made birds, he created the air in which they could fly. He said, before God made fish, he created the water in which they could swim. God is always previous. And I began to believe something and formulate an idea. I imagine I'd always believed it, but just didn't have it fixed in my mind like I should have. That when I get there, God will have already been there and waiting for me, whatever that place is. When I finally decide this is the step I'm going to take by faith to believe God, I'll find myself stepping in the arms of God because God is there. You see, God had prepared a fish, a great fish. No doubt the gullet of that fish had the capacity to swallow a man. And God had prepared, had prepared a great fish before Jonah ever went overboard before they ever had him in their hands to throw him overboard the fish was in the water prepared by God waiting with an open mouth to receive what God was doing because the fish had been told instructed appointed by God to be there And I want you to know that the Christian life is a faith life. Faith is described as the substance of things hoped for. The substance on what we stand. The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence, evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is described as. Faith is defined as looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus. When my children were very young, they jumped off everything into our arms. They really did. They jump off the cabinet. They jump off the stairs. They just believed we were going to catch them. You parents have been there. Now, I did have one grandson who didn't wait for a parent or grandparent. He just would dive off the stairs and do a belly buster on the floor. He's still nutty like that. But anyway, that... That's a different case, different story. But they knew we would be there to catch them. And so many million times more dependable, infinitely more dependable than some human being is our God. You can trust him. 
you can trust him. He's always previous. He will be there. He will have what you need as you venture by faith and step out. Can you imagine how it helped Jonah to be swallowed by a fish God had prepared? Now we can't get to it today. I just preached too long and some of you have complained about that enough. But anyway, I'm just kidding about that. No one's ever complained. Matter of fact, I've got lots of men who line up and say, would you preach an hour longer or two hours longer or someday preach till midnight on the evening service? Just kidding. But anyway, I'm going to preach on Jonah's prayer. And there's so many things evidenced in that prayer. But right now, it's just God had prepared a great fish. How many of you are thinking about something in your life where you need faith for something or someone? You need faith. You know what you need, what you're saying, what I'm saying? We need to believe that God will be there and be in it. We, we need to believe that God will provide. I remember when I, said, when I said we're going to start a college and the church, God bless you, dear precious people. I said, don't call me as the pastor without voting to establish a college at the same time. I don't know what kind of discussions you had. I never asked about that, but you just said, oh yes, we're going to do that. And you voted not only to call me as the pastor, but to start a college in God's time. Well, we had to believe that God was in that. I didn't tell you that, look, most of my friends are telling me how crazy I am for ever wanting to do such a thing. Most of my friends are laughing about the fact I'd want to start a school to train people to serve the Lord. But God put it in my heart and I have to believe that if he if he put it in my heart, it's a prophecy of what will be fulfilled and what will happen. And we have seen it now. 25 years it's existed. Matter of fact, we make a, make a journey this week to an accrediting agency. And I'll tell you more about that a little later. That is, that is the result of so much hard work and prayer. This school belongs to God. It's his. It's not mine. I don't own it. I don't have my name on it. Uh, I, don't, I don't have it. It's his. He can do with it as he pleases. But we had to believe that God would be there. You said, you ever think you'd fail? Yes. And we have failed. You ever think you might fall down? Sure. But we've gotten back up. When we built this auditorium, this auditorium in which you're seated right now, we built this meeting, I was having the first trouble I had with my spine and I came in an opening over there. I don't know if Mr. Fox was with me that day or not, but I came in and I had somebody get a chair for me. We didn't have a building. All we had was a floor. And I sat in the middle of it and I looked around and it looked so cavernous. I thought, dear God in heaven, what have I led these people to do and I cried because I couldn't walk even from the door to the chair and then I led you to do this that's been many many years ago but do you know what God was there God was there if you look back on some things in your life that you went through and you thought at the moment you were going through them, if it was something that broke your heart, it might have been the suffering and death of a loved one that you think, oh now, how did I ever live through that? It might have been the disappointment with yourself or with someone you loved. And you think, how did I ever live through that? One way, God was there. He was there. I'm saying to you, He prepared a great fish. He had prepared a great fish. God was there. Oh, the Lord wants those Ninevites, those people in Nineveh saved because they're lost. He wants them saved. When God saw them, they were like sheep without a shepherd. When God saw them, they were all perishing 
When God saw them, they were living in unbelief. When God saw them, they were already under his wrath. When God saw them, when God saw them, if they stopped breathing, they were just going to hell. That was their next stop. And he had compassion on them. And he touched someone's heart to go preach to them. And instead of going straight there to preach to them, guess what he did? He went the other direction. And God said, I'm going to do something about that. And when he got on board that boat in that awful storm and said, throw me overboard, they got rid of him all right and the storm stopped. But God wasn't finished the Lord had prepared a great fish. May I tell you a little secret? This is a preacher's secret. I have a whole list of things and a line of things and points I want to make, but I'm, I'm stuck right here because God, the Lord God, the Lord had prepared a great fish. Some of you are thinking, What's ahead of me? Remember this. God had prepared a great fish. He'll be there. Sometimes I think horror of horrors to admit this. Please forgive me. I'm going to ask for forgiveness before I even tell it. But I think as I grow older and body weakens, who will take care of my precious one? Maybe she's thinking, who will take care of me? But you see, it's wrong to worry and fret at this juncture because God will be there. He will be there. I don't know of a greater truth with more meaning and more help for me at this moment than to know that he had prepared a great fish. He didn't caught off, get caught off guard. He wasn't surprised. It wasn't something that startled God. He had all of it worked out. When the net broke and the man dropped, so to speak, metaphorically, when the accident came, and someone was injured, metaphorically speaking. When, when we look at this scene, when they took him to the side of the boat and splashed him into the sea, God had prepared a great fish. And some of you are wondering, I don't know how I'm going to get through this and where I'm going and why in the world did this happen? And I'm telling you, my kids, my wife, my home, my Look, don't discount God. If you're a child of God, the Lord had prepared a great fish. God is always previous. He said, I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And he uses us as his hands, his eyes, his feet. He uses us to be there for someone in something. God is there. I want you to look at this verse again, would you please? And have it in your eyes. Pardon me for just giving the introduction, but the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me here. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. In 63 BC, before Common Era, before Christ, 63 BC, a Roman general by the name of Pompey came into Jerusalem, actually into Palestine and then to Jerusalem, to really annex all that part of the world for the Roman Empire. 
And they, as he came in to Jerusalem, priests met him at the entrance of the temple and begged him and pleaded with him and prostrated themselves down so he had to walk over them and ask him not to go into the temple and not into the Holy of Holies. No heathen, no unbeliever had ever gone in. He ignored them, pushed them aside, and in that most sacred of places, he went in, pulled back the veil between the holy place and the holy of holies, and stepped inside the holy of holies. Came out and vehemently explained and screamed to them, there's nothing there but a dark, empty room. When the prophet Isaiah went in, would you listen? He said, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings and with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips. I am dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Same place. Same place. And there are people who go through this world and worry and fret and wonder what happened to the guy who was thrown in the sea or what's become of that poor pitiful person we read about in the news or whose picture we saw when something tragic had happened. And they say that there's nothing out there for them but a dark, empty space. But God's children know the Lord is with us. God is there. And the Lord in a certain way says the same thing to us here. The Lord had prepared a great fish. He didn't just get thrown in the sea. He went into the care and keeping of God for God to deliver him where the Lord wanted him. And some of you are going through what you imagine to be the most awful thing, but I want you to know God is with you and he will not forsake you. And you remember in the story of Jonah when he went overboard the Lord had prepared a great fish. Would you pray with me?